So cryptocurrency is the future of money. And a lot of people when I talk to them about money, they're not really sure what money is. But we're starting to see and uh, think about what, what money is and want to make sure that people all over the world understand what money is, what the money is that you're using now, what money used to be, and what it's going to be in the future. <clears throat> so a lot of people for many uh, thousands of years thought that gold was money, and gold still is money. And there's a difference between gold and the paper money that you use right now. So the paper money that you use right now, the NARA, is currency. You can use it to buy and sell stuff. Um, you can, it has different numbers on it. Everybody recognizes it, but it doesn't keep its value. And that's the difference between money and currency. Money keeps its value. And so gold has always been money for a long time. Now wealth, wealth is a completely different thing. Wealth is so currency and money are, are just ways of uh, transferring wealth from one place to another. Wealth is what you build up over time, your capabilities, your reputation, your family, your contacts. The, the way that you have to do things. And one of the reasons that gold is money and paper money is, is not, that comes out every year is very low. It's less than 2%. So there's less than, so for all the gold that's in the world, with all the gold mining, there's only about 2% new gold added every year. So people that hold gold know that there isn't going to be a large increase in the amount of it. And so the inflation rate of gold is low. You can see from this chart, it's less than 2%. Now, I'm here in America. We use the U.S. dollar, uh, and we uh, are happy to share the U.S. dollar all over the world. Uh, the purchasing power of the U.S. dollar has gone down over time. So I have a graph here where what we used to be able to buy um, for, that would buy $100 worth of product uh, about 100 years ago, now is about $3.50. And so I'm going to throw a few other terms out here. Fiat, it's currency by government degree. Degree. So we're told here in America that we have to use the dollar. We can't use it for anything else. We have to use it to pay our taxes. Currency in countries used to be backed by gold, but it's not. And it's hard to use. Um, for people that have credit cards, there's a fee on it to send it from bank to bank or country to country. It's slow and it's, um, it's not really kept up with the way that people expect things to happen on the internet and uh, even just keeping value. The currency that y'all use is a currency. It's not money. You can see um, that from the inflation rate of the Naira that it averages between 10 to 20 percent per year. That means every year that much new money is or currency is created. And of course, the government and the banks get that first and they get to spend it. So the amount that you're able to buy every year is less and less. So Bitcoin is an alternative to traditional to the government currencies that everybody uses now. If you want to find out more about it, a great place to go is to We Use Coins. A really good book that I refer to in this presentation is the Bitcoin Standard. And it gives a history of money and how Bitcoin is going to work uh, in that. Now, Bitcoin is money. And I'll tell you why that is. It operates on a trustless system, which means that people don't have to be trusted for it to work. It works even with people that don't trust each other which is a great way because, you know, with currency, you have to trust that the government is going to run the currency well. And you have to trust that if you deposit money into a bank, you're going to get it back. Um, so with Bitcoin, you don't have to have trust. Now, that means on the flip side that you have to take a little bit more responsibility for maintaining your control over the Bitcoin. It uses a lot of technology that have been in creation for many years. Um, and it has all the attributes of money. If you look at the inflation rate of Bitcoin, right now in 2018, the inflation rate is about 7%. But since it's mathematically defined, the inflation rate is going to continue to go down over time to below 1%. So the inflation rate of Bitcoin is going to be lower than that of gold here in the next few years. So it's going to be a better money than gold. 
Besides, you can send it from phone to phone. You can buy things with it. Much easier to use than gold. Speaking of uh, using a cryptocurrency, here is uh, a way that you can use it. Uh, Sandy should be showing you this, that you can use a Coinomi wallet on your phone and you can scan and you can send funds. I'm planning on sending Zen to everybody that is here today a little bit. So we're gonna collect Zen addresses. Uh, they're complicated numbers, uh, but that's the way the system works right now. And I'll, I'll follow up and send that to everybody who's here so you have a chance to use this new type of, of currency. <clears throat> now, cryptocurrency, Bitcoin and Horizon are just getting started. Uh, there's still improvements to be made. Bitcoin started about 10 years ago. So we're at the point where it's people know about it. It's getting used by people, but it still has a lot of room to grow. So these graphs are again from the Bitcoin standard book. And you can see there's more and more transactions every year on Bitcoin and then more and more people want it. So the price goes up. Um, and I think the price in U.S. dollars today is around, yeah, right around here, $6,500, because people are starting to realize that government-issued currencies aren't as good as cryptocurrencies, cryptocurrencies that, that, are, that are operated and, and set up well. The only problem with Bitcoin is that the transactions are public, not private. So all the transactions are recorded on a public ledger with pseudo-anonymous addresses, and over time, some of those addresses can be tied directly to people. And uh, y'all you, are probably familiar with different government institutions. Uh, they like to keep track of people. And whereas businesses and, and people, they, they need privacy in order to do things well. And I'll talk about that a little bit more. And that's why we developed Horizon. Um, businesses require privacy, just you know, employment contracts. Uh, business deals, customers, suppliers, trade secrets, know-how. And the way that privacy is enabled in Horizon is with zero-knowledge proofs, which is an even more advanced cryptographic technology than what was used to create Bitcoin. And so let me go ahead and talk about Horizon. So any questions so far? Pretty straightforward. All right. Let me go ahead and uh, talk a little bit about Horizon then. Uh, this is very similar to a presentation that I just gave a couple weeks ago at the Texas Bitcoin Conference. And um, uh, we uh, have our tagline of bringing privacy to life, uh, which we want to have cryptocurrency used by people understand that there's an option to use it with privacy. And now, Horizon's been around for about a year and a half. That's when we launched. It's, if for, for y'all that are familiar with cryptocurrencies, uh, we're proof of work. It uses zero knowledge proofs. And we're working to get it completely decentralized with no one group in control. We still have to build that part out and develop it. But uh, again, for y'all that are familiar with other cryptocurrencies, we took the idea of the blockchain from Bitcoin. We brought in the privacy from Zcash uh, Dash as a good model for a treasury, which is continuous funding and a distributed autonomous organization. So voting um, using the system. Uh, there's some ideas that we brought from IOTA. Uh, one of them is liquid democracy. So um, it's a type of uh, voting and decision making that lets you bring in experts as well as using a directed acyclic graph, which is a different type of data structure than a blockchain, which allows for faster transactions. And we're also adding the ability to use, uh, to do side chains and develop applications on the system. So there's a 21 million uh, maximum Zen that are gonna be created. There wasn't any pre-mine, no founder's award, no initial coin offering. Again, some of these are industry terms um, for myself. This is probably the fourth or fifth industry that I was in. I started out as an electrical engineer from the Naval Academy in Annapolis. I was an officer in the Navy on a submarine uh, in the Pacific Ocean based out of Hawaii. 
uh, was a nuclear engineer then, and then worked for Cisco Systems uh, and founded a data networking company and did that. Right now I'm a cryptocurrency miner and I also helped found Zen. So I've got a bit of experience in engineering and business and now cryptocurrencies as well. So, um, and I'm working to apply this type of experience to the growth of Horizon. We got a good sized team. With the funding model that we have, uh, we're able to uh, hire developers and marketing people and managers and uh, people all over the world. And we're able to host events like this and um, uh, provide send to people because of the ongoing treasury model that we have. And I'll talk a little bit more about that. In addition to that, for some of the large software development um, and research and development that we do, we have partnerships with leading organizations um, in the world. IOHK is one of them. Uh, InfoPulse is a d development team out of Ukraine. And then we work with some institutional investment groups um, for uh, different things. We're on many different exchanges. Uh, including Binance and Wobi. So although you could certainly uh, exchange within a cryptocurrency wallet like Coinomi for Bitcoin or for other uh, cryptocurrencies, some people prefer to use a larger exchange. So now why does Horizon exist? So why did we go through the trouble of creating a new cryptocurrency when, when we could just as easily use Bitcoin? Well, there's some things that are important to me and the other people that uh, help develop horizon. And we feel that people can reach their potential when they have liberty and freedom. And it's important to have privacy in your papers, in your communications, in your spending, to be able to have that liberty and freedom. And that it's not natural that governments and big businesses and uh, all sorts of other organizations are able to spy on you and find out all your personal information all the time. And it's important, I believe, to be able to work to have people maintain their privacy and thus their freedom. And a lot of people say, well, I don't really need privacy. I'm not doing anything illegal. Well, it turns out that in a lot of everybody's day-to-day -day life, they do want privacy. They want the ability to decide what they're going to share with other people or not. When folks contribute to the church uh, or, or mosque of their choice, they're making financial transactions. You don't necessarily want to share that information with everybody. How much to who? Um, there's other places where people like to pay, pay privately. Medical procedures, um, funeral homes, hospice, uh, do you want people to know what type of medical problems that you have? Or if there's things that you want to do that are legal, but don't want other people to know. Sometimes, um, for example, if, if all your uh, credit card transactions, all, the, all that information is kept by the bank, if you use credit cards for things, if you get in a lawsuit, it may be possible that all that information gets pulled and, and shared with everybody in the, loss, in the lawsuit. So, there's reasons why people use cash today and the reason and if they're going to be using cryptocurrency in the future, why it has to have privacy capabilities. And of course, like I said earlier, businesses, businesses totally need privacy. So now international remittances is one thing that we see a lot of uh, here in America. We have folks that send money to people all over the world and the international remittances they typically need to go through something like a Western Union or a bank system. And during that entire step of sending the currency from one country to another, it loses value. There's fees that are taken out, there's exchange rates that are taken out, and it takes a while. I'm able to send Zen to people all over the world and they'll get it in just a few minutes. And then they can do whatever they want with it. And I have no idea what they're doing with it. There's no person that's required in the path of sending Zen um, to, be, to be trusted. I don't have to trust who, the local person at Western Union. I don't have to worry that if I send something to a family member in a different country that you know, wherever they get it from, uh, somebody's going to follow them home or know that they're receiving payments from somebody else. It just, it just happens. Now, you can send a Zen private payment today. 
the advanced part of the, so we have two parts of Horizon. We have transparent addresses, which are just like Bitcoin. They're public and they can be tracked. Um, and then there's shielded addresses. The shielded addresses are the fully private anonymous ones. Right now, it takes a, a full computer to use or, or a computer to be able to send shielded addresses. We have some uh, improvements that are on the way that our developers are doing that in about six to 12 months, we'll have these full shielded private addresses on a mobile device. We don't have that today, so I just want to be clear about that. But also, you know, we're, we're a work in progress. The technology is there. We just need to work through it and get it implemented. But if you want to do fully private uh, or, or even anonymous payments, you can use the full Zen Cash wallet and you can use a shielded address on it and send it to where you are. Here's one of the companies that we have partnerships with that people might like to use things anonymously. So the philosophy that we have in Horizon is that uh, since it's a proof of work currency, there's certainly uh, miners that keep it from being, uh, from being hacked, from being changed. And uh, cryptocurrency miners are a large part of maintaining the security of Horizon. So 70%, so we're creating new blocks um, every two and a half minutes. And so every month there's 200, about 200,000 new Zen that are created. And of the 200,000 new Zen that are created, 70% of those go to cryptocurrency miners. 10% of those go to the treasury, which then goes to our nonprofit foundation, which we turn around and spend on development and marketing and graphics design and things like that. 20% go to people that operate nodes. And if, if you're not familiar with cryptocurrency, you might not uh, have a feeling for what nodes are, but nodes are what your wallet connects to. So if you have a application on your phone or computer that is the Horizon application and you want to send or receive funds, it needs to connect to nodes. And these nodes are the ones that pass along all the transaction information um, and get it to the miners to mine. It's very important that those nodes stay up and running. So we pay people to operate nodes. We pay them to operate nodes, but to operate nodes, they also have to own a little bit of Zen so that they have skin in the game. Um, and we're using this uh, development uh, to further decentralize it. So right now, we have a small group of uh, developers that are developing the system and making decisions. Within one to two years, we're going to turn that over completely, all the decisions to the people that own Zen and it's going to vote using a liquid democracy system and a decentralized government governance model. We do not want to have the weakness of having any centralized organization where uh, larger organizations could put pressure to shut the system down or do anything else like that. So from a node standpoint, we have a lot of nodes. Uh, in fact, we have more nodes uh, running out there that are available to connect wallets to than any other cryptocurrency. Um, and we are trying to get them available in just about every country out there. Uh, for those of y'all who are familiar with um, uh, network security and things like that, you'll know that, that countries can impose firewalls to shut down different types of uh, transactions and activity um, at, at the country level. Well, if we can get nodes into just about every country and location throughout the world, then wallets are always going to, and applications are always going to be able to connect to the nodes, and they're always going to be able to be used. So as part of the design and as we continue to uh, develop the system, we want to make sure that we think about every part of the cryptocurrency ecosystem and make sure that it's addressed. So uh, volunteers to the system, community developers, uh, the nonprofit foundation that we have. Uh, we want to work with businesses. It's great to have people to be able to spend Zen, but it's difficult if there's no businesses that want to accept it. So you can start by doing person to person transactions, and that's a great place to start. But it's even better to work to have local businesses accept Zen, and then people that have it that want to go buy things there. Um, so we have a roadmap and we started out back in the second quarter of 2017. We've accomplished a lot of things on the way and we have a lot of things that are still left to do. So I'm letting you know about Horizon while we've gotten a bunch of things done and, and we still have improvements that we're going to make and that are going to, that are going to make things better. We've also had problems on the way. 
Uh, we've been attacked uh, by developers and different groups. Uh, we have had um, a 51% attack. Again, if you're familiar with cryptocurrencies, that's where uh, different things can be um, uh, done to change transactions. And we've addressed and we've had network congestion issues where there's actually too much use. And so it's good that we start and grow and figure out the different problems so that we can address them. So as we continue to get bigger, we've already addressed any of the issues. So I'm not gonna say that we're perfect, but I am saying that we have started operation. We have people that are using Horizon uh, all the time. And through this actual use, we're able to incrementally improve the system and the, uh, the ap applications. In fact, one of the things that we can protect against 51% attack is something that other cryptocurrencies are now adopting and putting in place because um, the miners secure the cryptocurrency and make sure that the transactions uh, that are in the different blocks stay the, the way they are and everybody agrees on them. But um, it's important to uh, be able to uh, make sure that any miners aren't be, gonna be able to go through it and change that. So, uh, and again, I won't, don't wanna drill too much into detail on this. Um, like I said, we have a lot of improvements planned. Uh, we have our secure nodes and super nodes right now. Those are paid centrally. We're gonna decentralize that. We have our treasury and voting system. There's a lot of uh, folks in the cryptocurrency industry that are looking at the implementation of our, uh, of our voting system for the, how to decide how decisions are made and, and treasury is allocated. And there's a lot of uh, new applications that we have that we're releasing soon. One of them is side chains. Um, side chains is a way to do additional applications. So we have more than 20,000 nodes out there. These are 20,000 computers that are operating the system and we're going to be able to run additional applications on that. So there's uh, places in the, in the market where you might want to be able to run applications that you don't have to trust somebody. Like you don't have to trust a, 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 a central uh, a, a bank or an organization like Facebook to keep your information private. So one of the ones might be a VPN, a virtual private network application that runs on side chains. So we're putting together a software development kit with this. If any of y'all are developers, I encourage you to stay up to date on what we're doing with that and look at the software development kit when it comes out and think about different applications that you might want that, are, uh, that can use a distributed uh, distributed network. Here's a picture of our new uh, wallet or, uh, that is going to be coming out. Uh, it's ready. Uh, we've been testing just different features, user interface features. Uh, we have our user interface team. We want to make sure that everything in the wallet works really, really well. Um, and so the application itself has been ready for a couple months, but we've had a group of testers that are continuing to test it and make it better. better. This is a, a lightweight wallet, or a full wallet that can do the uh, private and anonymous transactions. It's also going to have the voting system integrated into it when that's ready and have other tools in it. So it's changing from being a cryptocurrency wallet to a full up cryptocurrency application. Now, if you have, uh, and if any of all you know business owners or uh, other folks locally that may want to accept Zen or other cryptocurrencies, there are a couple of point of sale applications that can be used right now or where people can accept cryptocurrencies at their businesses. So AnyPay is one of them. Here's a picture of the AnyPay uh, application and uh, Paytomat is another one as well. So those are two systems that uh, People want to be able to accept Zen. It'll um, you know, put up a, a QR code. You can scan it and you, and you can pay. So there's already ways that you can start creating a full cryptocurrency ecosystem right now. So what I encourage and I'm asking you to do is to get involved with Horizon. You're going to have a chance with some of the uh, Zen, which is our, our token on, on your wallet, to be able to uh, figure out a way to spend it or change it to some other cryptocurrency or something like that. But we have two very active communities, one on Discord and one on Telegram that you're welcome to join. If you go to our main webpage, here's a picture of it. You can go to the Discord link or the Telegram link 
Um, there's other places where there's information, but I'll tell you, Discord and Telegram are the two most active. Um, we have a forum. Uh, if you're a cryptocurrency miner, if you have inexpensive electricity, then mining is certainly an option. And if you're able to amass 42 Zen or 500 Zen and have a little bit of technical capability, we have a guide that shows you how to run a secure or super node and continue uh, to get payments for helping to maintain the system. And an easy thing to do is just let people know about Horizon and about cryptocurrencies and, uh, and actually use them and start creating a cryptocurrency ecosystem. So that's what I have as the, the overview for uh, Horizon. I appreciate y'all listening and your interest, and I'm happy to answer questions uh, if any of you have any at this point. Uh, so your question is, is, is there any kind of affiliate program where you can earn uh, Zen yeah. by other people? It's not, it's not. No, there isn't. Um, so we don't have an affiliate program. I'm not asking you to buy anything from me. Um, I'm, I'm, I don't have anything to sell to you today, and there, there, it is not an affiliate program, and there's not a way to have it snowball like that. There's other ones that were out there like that, like uh, called BitConnect and other things like that. I'm not here to, to sell anything to you today, but I, I would like to encourage you to use cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin and Horizon and to um, let you know about... Um, about why they're useful and why they're going to be helpful to your life. There are a few ways to get Zen. Uh, one of them is to purchase it. Uh, you can go to an exchange and you can put you know, your existing cryptocurrency onto the exchange and you can purchase it. Uh, that's, that's one way. What, another way is to be a cryptocurrency miner. Um, I'm a cryptocurrency miner. It does take specialized hardware um, and it takes low electricity price. Another way is to run a secure node. So uh, get 42 then and run a server. So uh, probably the best way is to, to earn it from other people. Uh, it, it just depends on what your situation is. And that's why I'd like to set up to show people how they can um, set up merchants to accept Zen. So it, it is, it's one of these, we call it, you know, a chicken and egg problem. You know, what came first, the chicken or the egg? Um, so that's why I'm working with y'all to continue to let people know. And um, uh, by getting everybody started with some Zen in their wallet, and then you can trade between each other. And um, then if you find that that's valuable, you can go to an exchange, either the Changely in the wallet itself or on, the, uh, on an exchange and get more Zen. Yeah, so a secure node, um, it, you can go to the website, horizon.global, and under Get Zen, uh, you can find out how to run a secure node. There's instructions there on how to set it up. In most cases, you rent what's called a virtual private server. So there's uh, people that run servers all over the place, and you access that server, rent it. So it requires a little bit of technical capability. You get 42 Zen, uh, you put the Zen in your own wallet, and you uh, tell the server uh, about the address in your wallet that has Zen on it, and operate the server and keep it up and running, and that'll get you to earn additional Zen. And that'll help secure the network. So like I said in the presentation, we pay people to um, help secure the network. Okay, uh, the audio is up, but thank you very much for everybody, and uh, I, I look forward to talking with you later, Sonny. All right, thank you. Okay, thank you.